Pamka Crum Miller, analyst at uh, Open Cities. Thanks for joining us. This is a bit of an unprecedented situation in recent German politics, having a lame duck chancellor. That's right. She has been in power for a really long time. She's held the position of um, president of her party for 18 years, and she's been chancellor for the past 13 years. So this is unprecedented indeed, but she has also been around for a really long time. What's unprecedented is now. What's going to happen now? Because she stays the chancellor, but uh, is her power, is her authority diminished as a result of the fact that everybody knows that she's uh, heading for the door? Yes and no, because what she's doing isn't such an... It is quite a smart move at the end of the day, because first of all, she's preparing the future for her own party. She's preparing her successor so that she or he can be a strong candidate uh, for the next German election. Really? She, she said she'd stay out of it. You're, that's not what you're thinking. She, you think she's grooming someone. Well, not necessarily, but what I'm saying is by stepping away now, she leaves a maximum of three years, let's say if we don't have early elections, three years until 2021, for that new person to establish themselves, to you know get a name and a reputation, etc. Um, she saves her party more or less by doing that because she knows already for years that she's not going to run again. She was never going to run again in 2021. So she always knew she had to find the moment where she would step away and prepare somebody else. That's the first thing. Now, this happens earlier than planned, maybe, but it still is a good thing for her party that she does that. Um, a good thing for her party, because if you look at the precedents in other countries, when the party leadership senses that the big boss is on the way out, Inevitably, at some point, someone tries something. In the past, political opponents uh, of anybody who's crossed Merkel within the city who's been crushed might be different, though, now, no? That's right. And so now she has said today she will stay chancellor until the end of her mandate in 2021. And the real question is, is will that be possible and will it make sense? Um, and even this has been debated for years. Um, maybe it makes more sense to have somebody else take over from her ahead of the end of her chancellorship. So I think it's it's maybe unrealistic that she will be able to stay in her position for three years without um, actually leading the party. And she herself has always Could said it... that she doesn't, doesn't de dissociate chancellorship and party leadership. And now she does it herself. Could it come as soon as December when the CDU meets in its party conference? I think that's highly unlikely. Germany, at the end of the day, has a very stable political culture, unlike other European countries. You say it's got a stable political culture, but there's another factor in all this, which is the Social Democrats fared very poorly again in these regional elections on Sunday. Their leader hinting that they may pull the plug on that coalition, a very un-German thing to do. That's very right, a very un-German thing to do. And so far, we haven't really seen any serious moves into that direction. Andrea Nahles, leader of the SPD, she seems like she wants to stay in place and stay put. Um, maybe you think it's a bluff? Maybe something changes now with the new leader of the CDU. But clearly the National Coalition has to do something to renew itself in one way or another. They can't continue in the current state for the next three years. That's pretty clear. Would it be in the SPD's interest to leave the government? They probably don't have much to lose, let's put it that way, at this stage. They've fallen so low in all polls, national as well as regional, as we've seen in both Bavaria and Hesse, that right now they probably don't have much to lose to leave the national coalition. It has probably crushed them to be in a coalition with Merkel and with her party. Um, so maybe they can actually renew themselves outside of a coalition. And maybe that's actually the only way they can renew themselves. Franke Krummler, will uh, Germany's voice be diminished on the European stage? We're at this crucial juncture ahead of European elections when there's all this talk of reform that's been touted by the French president. Uh, is this going to weaken A, Germany's standing and B, the federalists in Europe as a whole? I think there are two ways to look at this. On the one hand, we shouldn't forget that Angela Merkel is the leader, the European leader which has been, who has been around for the longest time. So she knows everything and everyone and has the most respect to that extent as she's the one who has the experience of leading Germany and maybe even lead, leading Europe. And I don't think that will go away. On the other hand, as soon as we, as long as we don't know how much longer she will stay in power and whether she will really be able to hold on to power until 2021, 20, by definition, it diminishes her, her power at the European level as well. Does it make Emmanuel Macron the de facto leader of Europe right now? 
if he can't cooperate with anyone to push any of his European reforms, then I guess he won't go far either. So I'm not sure it's in his interest. All right. Famke Krummeler of Open Cities, many thanks for joining Thank you. us. <laughs>